let me uh, let me start showing you a few um, a few things, sort of live uh, about uh, things that Mathematica can um, um, uh, can now do. So let's talk about. I mentioned probability and statistics. Okay, so there's a new thing. You know the notation for you know x is an element of something in Mathematica. Well, now there's a new thing. X is distributed like something. So uh, we can say, for example, X is distributed like a normal distribution. And now we can say, for example, what's the expectation of X to the, to the N given that X is distributed according to a normal distribution? And there's the result. Or we could, for example, say, um, we could ask for a probability. So we can say, what's the probability that X that uh, x lies between 2 and 10 in a, um, if x is distributed according to a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda as a result. So this is all, it's a, it's a very convenient kind of thing. We can, we can take all these kind of, uh, uh, this, the, directly this kind of notation and methodology in probability theory and um, uh, just uh, apply it directly in, in Mathematica. So I mentioned, um, so let, let's, there are all sorts of new functions, like there's a random variate function which uh, uh, generates, needless to say, random variates according to a distribution. So let's say I say I generate 50 random variates according to the normal distribution here. Let me show you something else. Now I can, just like I can have predefined distributions, symbolic things like Poisson distributions, normal distributions, uh, you know, all kinds of other distributions, including many that I'd never heard of before, uh, we can also take this empirical data and we can say, give me, uh, let's turn that into an empirical distribution, okay? So that's a little bit like an interpolating function. That's a representation of an empirical distribution. So I could, for example, go ahead and I could say plot uh, the CDF of that from, um, uh, let's say, minus 5 to 5, and there I'll get the result based on that empirical distribution. Let's say the probability that x is less than 2 based on uh, x being distributed according to uh, outline 5. That's the result. So it, it, it works just like um, a, a built-in symbolic distribution. Okay, so that's a little bit on, on, um, uh, on those kinds of things. Let me, let me take a look here. Let's see, um, uh, let me show you a few other kinds of things. Oh, i just show you some sort of uh, bits and pieces here. Um, let's say, oh, these are some financial charts um, just showing some of the new kinds of functionality that's built in there. Um, or for example, here's something fun. Um, so we can now, using all of our spline capabilities and so on in Mathematica, uh, we can now actually import every aspect of a font um, and treat sort of a font as a first class graphical thing in, in Mathematica. So here was a, a font and we've taken the font and we've done some computations on the font. Uh, that's the result. And of course we can generate uh, fonts also. Other, other kinds of things we might want to do. We could, uh, for instance, I mentioned control theory. Let's get a root locus plot. Um, here's one of those, let's see. So there's, a, you can see a, a transfer function thing up there, root locus plots for that. Oh, here's some new stuff. Uh, these are just uh, showing plot markers, various kinds of uh, uh, named or pictures, pictured plot markers here. Um, and now I can go and I can compute things. Um, I can compute this, uh, uh, how this moves around as I change one of the parameters. Oh, I mentioned statistical distributions. There's a, there's a really big collection of these things. Um, here's just kind of a gallery of statistical distributions, uh, including, as I say, lots that I, one can learn. Every, every one of these distributions, in a sense, encapsulates a bunch of knowledge in some particular area, whether it's a Levy distribution, which I have heard of, or a log normal distribution, which I've certainly heard of, or a, a Landau distribution, which I have to say I haven't heard of, although it might be something from physics, I don't know. Um, so there, there are lots of, uh, lots of kinds of uh, distributions supported here. Um, so let's see, other things to show here. Um, wavelets, I mentioned wavelets. Let's take a look at some of those. Uh, so this is now doing a, um, is now what it looks like to do a wavelet transform. And, and here's, this is showing a wavelet image plot, which is kind of showing an, an indication of, uh, uh, of what things look like um, after you uh, go through uh, a wavelet transform. But let's take a look at a few more, a few of the image processing capabilities. Um, let's say, I'll tell you what, actually, this is more fun. Let's get this thing out. 
and see what happens here. Um, it's all right, it's not dangerous. Um, there we go. There you all are. Somebody, somebody wave their arms or something. Just prove that this is actually a real image. There we go. Yes, very nice. Um, now we can take, uh, so that's image capture. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a running video image inside this, um, uh, inside here. And now we can say there's always a, a, a current image, right? So we can pick up the current image. And maybe we can take that current image and we can use something like edge detect on that image. And there's, there's the result of edge <coughs> detecting you all. And now, for example, let's, let's be a little bit more ambitious. Let's, let's say edge detect uh, of the current image. And let's just make that. Let's try and live dangerously. Let's see if we can make that dynamic now. There we go. That's just to prove. So. Um, and actually, let's let's be let's. I'll tell you what. Let's let's be even more ambitious. Let's live really dangerously. Let's try and do a real-time wavelet transform of the scene. So we can make that bigger. Well, it's working anyway. You, you, if you can see the little things are moving around at least a little bit inside there. Actually, let me uh, uh, let me bring up another kind of thing. Um, so, for instance, I could I could take any one of these um, uh, uh, of these operations that are now supported, like for instance. Image processing filter. So let's. There's a. Uh, this might make something kind of nice. That's that's making sort of the oil painting version of uh, today's scene using a, a Kurhawa filter uh, from image processing. I mentioned texture mapping. Um, so we can we can take. Here's an example of texture mapping, where we take in this case a picture of a bear, and we've texture mapped the picture of the bear onto this uh, uh, polyhedron. We could probably change the polyhedron if we want to. Let's just uh, make him on and. Icosahedron here instead. We can go ahead if we want to. We could change the opacity and all sorts of other things. Okay, let's let's live dangerously again. Let's see if we can do the the outrageous thing of taking um, uh, the current image that we're getting from the camera, and let's see if we can take that current image and texture map it onto uh, the faces of a an icosahedron. Uh, no, a dodecahedron here. So if you let's let's just check. Yes, it's real. <laughs> but, um, and we can pick up this, uh, this image that's running real-time stuff in there. We could, we could go ahead and change this. I don't know. Let's see what happens if we see if we can do this. There we go. That's cool. Um, and it really works. So it's, it's, to me, it's pretty impressive, the tower of technology that needs to work in order for this to, uh, uh, to all really operate is, is, is pretty interesting and pretty impressive. And it's sort of a, a combination of many different kinds of uh, underlying algorithmic areas. You know, this idea of texture mapping, you know, you usually think about texture mapping as being something for 3D graphics. In Mathematica, of course, it's all always very general. And here I just have a function that uh, will texture map onto a two-dimensional thing. And we're using built-in data in Mathematica. And now we're texture mapping the flags of countries onto the uh, uh, the shapes of countries. And notice that, of course, we know all the things about sort of the 3D geometry of it. Let's say um, we do that for countries in South America, including the ones that are kind of funky shapes. Um, and we'll see that uh, uh, this texture mapping onto these 2D regions works, uh, uh, works in those cases as well. I mentioned graph theory. There's a lot of different things in graph theory. Uh, one of the nice pieces of functionality, there's a lot of new stuff with graph visualization, being able to handle not just points as vertices of graphs, but being able to have sort of more information both displayed visually and uh, sort of included in the graph for computational purposes. A lot of convenience functions, like there's a highlight graph function. It's very convenient here. This is showing clicks in, in a, some random graphs. Um, the highlight graph function is a nice way to, to pick out pieces of graphs visually. There's lots of uh, enhancements in sort of core Mathematica uh, kinds of capabilities, like here's something that uh, uh, we're rather proud of algorithmically, the ability to do um, numerical integration on a function as wild and woolly as this uh, and actually get the right result. Uh, that's a, a, a non-trivial collection of, of algorithms that, that we invented. Also, we can look at uh, something, like, um, something like this. Um, we can take, uh, take a graphic here. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger. Um, taking a graphic here, and this is now image transformation. 
we can now do arbitrary image transformation. So we have a mathematically defined image transformation which is being applied to that, uh, to that bitmap image on the, on the right-hand side there. And that's all done in, uh, there's a parametric plot on the left and um, the same transformation is just being applied through the image transformation function um, that's a kind of functional operation on, on images. Well, let's see. Uh, there's lots of other things to talk about um, in terms of what, uh, oh, here's, here's an example just from image processing. It's kind of a fun one. Uh, you know, here's an eye chart that um, looks kind of fuzzy. Let's use image deconvolution and see what we can do with it. There's an eye chart that looks a lot better, um, all deduced from the bits that were in that fuzzy eye chart above. Um, actually, I, I have an urge to try one thing here, but it probably won't work. Um, let's try text recognizing that eye chart. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. It would have done, would have done pretty well here. Look at that. The text recognizer managed to get, okay, it could read the second line, the third line. By the fourth line of the eye chart, it was, it was getting a little bit too fuzzy for the text recognizer to read it. Um, but still, uh, that's, uh, that's a nice thing to have as a built-in capability in, in, in mathematical image processing system. Oh, wait, let me show you one more thing. Let, let me um, show you the... Um, uh, what it looks like when you do code generation in Mathematica. So let's say we have something like um, uh, a pure function that we're going to compile. Um, let's say something like this. And uh, I don't know. Something of that kind, okay? So then we'll have a compiled function there. And now we can just say export string uh, percent comma quotes C. Okay, so this is, so I took that compiled function and now here's C code that's been generated that can be run either, I, either I can compile, link load, run this thing within Mathematica, or I can take it and put it in an external system uh, and use the C code there. So that's a, that's a new, um, uh, a new capability.